Welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to Awakening for Negroes, a reply part 1. And here is a very important notice to you, our dear viewer, that it is never our intention to offend anyone with our videos. It is not also our intention to suggest, insinuate or preach hate towards any group, race, tribe or person. There is also no propaganda or any deliberate attempt to misinform anyone with our videos. Please look for the books, journals, magazines or other publications or sources we reference and study them yourself. Remember, I used frequently to have different cargoes of new negroes in my care for sale and it was almost a constant practice with our clerks and other whites to commit violent depredations on the chastity of the female slaves, and these I was, though with reluctance, obliged to submit to all times, being unable to help them. Equiano Order, 1789. And from another Negro slave, Otobakugano, 1787, the poor Negroes in the West Indies have suffered enough by such religion as the philosophers of the North produce, Protestants as they are called, are the most barbarous slaveholders, and there are none can equal the Scotch floggers and Negro drivers and the barbarous Dutch cruelties. Remember, we told you that to know whether the COVID-19 was real or slave master's fraud, you should focus on his brainless foot soldiers. Did you try this? And what was the outcome? Do you somehow still believe there was such a deadly threat? And the same people that supported mass killings now love their victims, but killing them to enforce lockdown so a virus does not kill them. And do you also remember our illustration of where one person is targeted, but a manager writes to everyone in the department to hide the fact that an individual was targeted? The whole lockdown and COVID-19 is targeted at Biafra and Ambazonia, and we shall prove this to you later. However, if you focused on the slave master's foot soldiers in places like Nigeria, you will be able to prove that yourself. But do you also remember when they tried to inject people with monkeypox in southern Nigeria and Biafra land a short while ago and schools closed and many people ran away, parents came to pick their children from school and all that? Have you wondered what happened to that monkeypox? Have you wondered why it was the military doing all those? Have you wondered why nobody talked about it again until they came up with this their COVID-19? The target. Do you remember when the slave hunting army called Nigerian army tried to inject the monkeypox vaccine and people ran away? If you don't remember this, check the old records, check some of our old videos. We made a video when this happened. Did you know that this whole COVID-19 stuff is the same monkeypox vaccine repackaged? And the simple proof, did you know that during this lockdown, the Nigerian lawmakers are passing a mandatory vaccination bill so that people can be forced to take the vaccination? They are claiming that it is when the COVID-19 vaccine becomes available. But remember, like we told you, the foot soldiers, they lack humanity. They lack common sense. They are usually the ones in the Senate. They are usually in leadership positions because the slave master installs them as puppets so that he can use them. This is what China has also learned and that is why you see the Chinese we are rumored to have been behind the virus. And then the British Prime Minister, the British Prince and the British Health Minister all claimed to have tested positive to the virus if you were to follow these things chronologically. Then we also saw the foot soldiers in Nigeria also claiming to have tested positive to the same virus. If you didn't decode that it was all political at that point, you only need to go back in time and review those instances, those cases closely to understand what may be going on. Slave trade. Do you remember when we asked how a bunch of priests could have captured and sold people in their hundreds without horses or camels or other forms of movement? Do you also remember when some people claimed that Negroes could have sold themselves and others as well? Do you also remember they have so far been unable to provide any relevant source 
that shows where Arab priests conducted a razia or slave raid. To better understand how the slave trade was done or conducted and by who and its relationship with COVID-19 and where they are going to or where the whole lockdown and whatever you are seeing today would dovetail to, let us reference the making of Northern Nigeria by Captain C.W.J. O. and this was published in 1911 and there we are shown that please remember that it is okay to label us as insane conspiracy theorists whatever you like but ultimately because we are saying something that will happen in the future it's not a prophecy you will see what we mean by the relationship between COVID-19 and the slave trade and it says slave raiding with all its attendant horrors was being carried on by the northern Mohammedans upon the southern pagans and the latter divided into vast number of small tribes were constantly engaged in intertribal warfare and for the sake of context we read further and it says extortionate taxation was exacted on most directions in the north and in Bonu the country was being devastated and the population exterminated by Zubay's cruel lieutenant Rabe. In the south, cannibalism, slave dealing, witchcraft and trial by ordeal were rife. In no direction were native traders even when traveling within their own provinces safe from the murderous attack of organized robber bands and their chiefs. No European trader had for purely trade purposes established a single post 50 miles from the Niger or Benue River. Now remember, they have to always find something to accuse the Negroes of. This is normal with them. However, we shall look at that in detail later. And it goes further to say, the abolition of slave raiding and intertribal warfare was therefore the first duty that devolved on the new administration. But this meant nothing more nor less than a military occupation of the entire country, for it was idle to suppose that peace could be achieved from a distance by a mere decree without a force on the spot strong enough to impose it. Nothing but fierce opposition to a policy which prohibited slave raiding could be expected from the Mohammedan states whose entire social organization depended on a sufficient supply of slaves and whose so-called wars provided them with their main source of income. Please, we want you to read this place again and again to understand what it is saying. It will also help you understand why the Chinese was invited by Nigeria while we are seeing videos of what the Chinese were doing to blacks and Africans. Remember, when you say Africans, they are not doing it to the Arabs. They are not doing it to anyone else but the Negroes. But they are telling you African. You need to look at the semantics very, very, very well. Also, we hope you noted where it says whose so-called wars provided them with their main source of income. This is the same North. It is the same group that actually invited the Chinese the way you are seeing it today. So you understand what we're talking about. And it goes further to say, can a cat give up mousing? was the reply of the slave raiding emir of Contagora when informed that under the British regime, slave raiding must cease. Now remember, this is like somebody you have been stealing with, coming to tell you that you have to stop stealing because the British were the biggest sponsors of the slave trade. You notice how they are also behind this COVID-19. If you don't understand it, remember they are alleged it was started in China, but you notice that the British Prime Minister the British Prince Charles, the British Health Minister all claimed to have tested positive to the virus. Then we saw the foot soldiers, that's the same emirs of the north, like El Rufai, all claiming to have tested positive to the same virus. Can you now connect the dots? The slave master. Remember the question we asked you, why do you think the slave masters described the Fulanese as genius? Remember that question, at least as far as we all know. You can't name one genius from Africa. So for the slave master to have described any group as genius, even when we know that's a lie on its own, there must be something somewhere deeper than what we're seeing. But then, remember also the question who you invited the Chinese 
to Nigeria despite evidences of the oppression of Negroes, blacks, and in bracket Africans. And please remember we prefer Negroes or blacks to anything like Africans because when you say Africans, they are not doing it to the Arabs. They are not doing it to the Moroccans. They are not doing it to the Algerians. So when you say African, what are you really talking about? Because those are Africans too, but nobody is singling them out. Remember we mentioned to you that we will show you why the BBC and the VOAs and all the slave masters media we are showing how the Chinese were oppressing the blacks or Africans or Negroes there but does not show things like Ambazonia or Biafra or report when the Nigerian army massacres Biafrans or Cameroonian army massacres Ambazonians or Fulani Hatsme massacre people they don't report those ones we will show you why they are reporting this one you don't need to believe us you don't even need to listen to what we're saying you just need to follow what they are doing and you will understand it later remember the slave masters media showed the invitation of chinese to nigeria because they wanted everyone to see it remember that very well remember if they didn't want people to see it they could have also done it secretly remember also that they showed the discrimination and oppression against negroes and blacks in china because they also wanted everyone to say it. Please note that we prefer blacks and negroes to anything African because that appellation does not show who is actually involved. Arabs are Africans, but they are not being oppressed. It's only the negroes. You need to bear that in mind and perhaps blacks if we choose to use that term. So permit us to ask you why then do you think they do not do the same when Biafrans or Ambazonians are massacred or when Fulani Hatsmen kill people. They don't report those ones, but they keep reporting and showing you these ones. Why do you think they do it? Remember, they are showing you because they want you to see it. If they didn't want you to see it, they wouldn't show you that one. So we want you to kind of extrapolate why they will want to show you A, but not B. Show you C, but not B. Show you D, but not B. Just show you one particular thing, but not the other. That's one thing we want you to ask yourself why. For example, you may have noticed that some so-called African-Americans, even though some uninformed ones deny having any relationship with the Negroes back in Africa, reacted to the fact that blacks were being oppressed in China and Nigeria was still inviting the Chinese to Nigeria. But our question to you is, who do you think could have invited those people? Do you think we are all that foolish that why the so-called African-Americans are reacting to it? then we are also the ones inviting the Chinese. You need to ask and answer that question very, very well. But however, the simple answer is because the slave hunters working with the slave masters are still in charge. All that happened here is that the slave masters of Europe and America have taught the Chinese how they do it. So that's why you see the Chinese coming to do exactly what the Europeans were doing. And you notice that they are also going through the same people the Europeans, Americans and Arabs used for their own. You need to understand the game very very well. And remember to ask yourself, why would somebody claim to have been infected by the coronavirus if they are genuinely not really infected? And why would people who are not infected be arrested by the government or be forced to claim that they are actually infected and they have been treated and they have been discharged? You need to ask that question. That's one thing we have to leave apart for now and just move a bit forward on this response video. So if the slave master cared about the Negroes, he would have reported the killings and atrocities against them in Biafra and Ambazonia, same way he does elsewhere, be it China or the United States. But your question again should be, why do you think he doesn't report some and reports others? If the slave master was not sending a message he would have also not reported the same oppression against Negroes by the Chinese. Remember that very well. And if heaven was real, or is actually what the slave masters claimed it is, do you believe that the same people who would not allow the Negroes freedom would have told them about it? Remember, if you want to look at it from the American War of Independence point of view, even after they had fought for what they called independence from the British, they never freed the Negroes. And you need to also notice that they adopted most of what the same British were doing till tomorrow morning. So you need to ask yourself those basic questions. And then to the response part of this video, we look at comments from some of our viewers. And this one says, the countries called today Benin, 
Togo and Nigeria are all on what used to be called the Slave Coast. Some geographers considered the Slave Coast as just where Togo, Benin and southwestern Nigeria are and they made a distinction between the Slave Coast and Benin but others included Benin with the Slave Coast and they called any slave from Benin Igbo. But Igbo of today is limited to those groups who call God Chuku or Chi and speak Igbo, whereas Igbos include those people plus some. Also, one of our viewers, best less casual gamer who we strongly believe is either a conditioned Negro or a Fulani, replied her to say that every slave sold from the bites of Benin and Biafra are Igbos is from, I believe, two 19th century works, the Renaissance loves quoting. An earlier Portuguese source from the 17th century actually differentiated the Igbo from the other groups. We both know the narrator has an agenda and so avoids the Portuguese book. We want you to take note of what he has said here. We might not look at it in this video, but we shall ultimately visit it. Remember, our philosophy here is that truth does not fear investigation. And so, we are not afraid of the truth. Wherever it is, as far as we can find it, we look for it. Remember also that these people, the person that claims we have an agenda, are the people through which the slave masters operate. The Arabs did it. It is through them that the slaves were captured. The Europeans did it. The Americans did it. The Chinese are doing it today. If you looked at COVID-19, remember we claim it is targeted at the area, which we shall ultimately prove to you, and their actions will confirm it much later. And so, when we asked who invited the Chinese, it is this group. So what the slave master normally does is, he conditions them for whatever he wants to do. If you noticed, for example, you will see that the whole claim of hundreds dying in Kano and all that is coming from them. They understand the game. That's why the slave master claimed that they are geniuses. But they are genius in the negative direction. But we leave that apart for now. And if you remembered where we mentioned how a Harvard professor like Professor Gates claimed that 388,000 were shipped to what is today the United States, this user made this comment, you are misinterpreting the 388,000. That's the number for North America alone, not the total estimate. The correct mathematics would be 10.7 million divided by 340 years. Now if you notice how these people are, remember, when an idea gets into the head of a negro, to eradicate that idea can only be by cutting the head off. You need to bear that in mind. If you notice, both the 10.7 million figure his or she is citing is not correct. The 340 years is just an estimate. And also, he or she claims North America. So even if we assumed without conceding that it's for North America, that number is so small and shouldn't even be an issue. Because if you do the calculation, you'll see that it doesn't make sense. However, we will want you to use this to know exactly how the brains of a Negro works. The slave master understands this. Even if it's a lie, even if it makes no sense, the slave master's job is only done if he can get the Negro to believe it. That's all he does. If you notice, for example, these figures he's claiming, the people that produced it said it was an estimate. It was Professor Gates that said, no, it should be adopted as a gold standard. So you see that the Negroes are buying into it because Professor Gates is saying it. And that is a trick the slave master understands perfectly, which we shall continue to look at in our series. And the same user goes on to say, well, if it was a trade, then all the captured would not be going to the same place. For instance, a shipload of 800 would be distributed throughout the Americas, not to North America alone. The major products of the trade were sugar and cotton. Cotton mostly grow in North America, but all over the Caribbean and Brazil has sugar cane, so it makes sense that the majority of the captured were sold through taking to Brazil and the Caribbean. Now, remember that when they speak like this, they forget that the Negroes are human beings. They think Negroes are just like articles like cattle. You just stop here and drop some, continue and move the other way. They have never looked at the slave trade in detail. They don't understand the lies of the slave master. And when you read these historical records with an open mind, you will understand how the slave master was able to change the narrative.
to how the Negroes could have sold themselves. And remember to use the China case, for example, where it was alleged that China was behind the virus, which we know is not correct if you were to research the details. And then, Nigeria is inviting the same Chinese and they are making a show of it. You need to ask yourself why they were doing it and ask yourself who invited those people. Somebody went and invited them. Somebody went and said, come meet us at this point. This is a flight waiting for you. Somebody recruited them. You need to ask yourself who did. Remember, the foot soldiers, like we told you, they lack humanity. They lack common sense. So they normally cannot recruit any qualified person beyond things that are fraudulent, beyond things like security. But if it comes to medicine, there is no way they could have. We ask you again, who do you think invited those people? And we hope you notice that it was the same flight that allegedly brought or evacuated some Nigerians, so-called Nigerians, from South Africa over the xenophobic attacks that was used for the same job. So you need to ask yourself, what is really going on? And further down, another user claims that Professor Gates never claimed that only 388,000 slaves total came across the Atlantic. He always claims millions were taken. He is only talking about those who ended up in the USA. When he gives that number, most of the slaves ended up in Brazil and the Caribbean gates got his numbers from the same sources as other historians. So please take note of these comments well, because the Negro believes what he wants. He's a sentimental being. The Negro is an emotional being. That's why the slave master was able to sell him the dummy of the golden calf with his religions, which we shall look at in a subsequent video. So what he believes depends on who is saying it, not the facts. So if you're telling him that 200 people died, he might ask you for evidence and if you show him one corpse, that's enough. If he likes you, he will believe you and he will continue saying 200 people died and there is nothing anyone can tell him that will change it. But if he doesn't like you, even if you provide that evidence, he will still doubt you. So this is why you notice that when they in Kano claim that 600 people died, they can show a video of one corpse being buried and they claim that it is 600 people. You will notice that they did the same thing when they claimed that over 300 girls were kidnapped in a school because they could also claim that those 300 girls fitted into a car. You need to understand who these people are. When they lie, if you don't decode it immediately, they will run with it. Nothing will make them change. It's not like tomorrow, something will make them say, okay, we lied, let's move on. They will never. They keep saying it. So that's one weak point of the Negro you need to bear in mind. The same user goes on to say, The Renaissance, neither I nor any actual historian is saying that only 388,000 slaves total came to all of North Americans. You see, this has already conflicted with what they are saying. You notice that the other one said it was just North America. This one is saying it's not the same as what they are saying. Just follow what they are saying closely. Remember, you don't need to watch our videos alone. You need to follow the comments. It will help you understand how the brain of a Negro works and why the slave master is able to enslave him, wherever he is. Even now that the Chinese are doing it, or the slave master is walking through the Chinese, you will see how it operates. They also have discovered where the fools live there. And it goes further to say, they are just talking about slaves who landed in the 13 colonies which became the USA. Remember, they will look for a way to make your lie true, no matter what you do. When you tell that lie, if it gets into their head, they will twist it, they will manufacture concoct things to make it appear true. That's who they are. They don't ever go to research it. This is the biggest weak point of the Negro that the slave master leverages on to enslave the Negroes. And it goes further to say, and the United States itself, I hope up were taught that between 1607 to 1730, the British set up 13 colonies, which later declared independence in 1776. Now remember, this person does not remember that the Spaniards were already in the business of slave trading and slave dealing before the British joined. It took almost 100 and something years before the British joined. But you see, all their stories start from the British and they overlook whatever could have happened before the British joined the slave trade. You need to understand this game very well. And it goes further to say, 
388,000 only includes those slaves who landed in the United States areas direct from Africa. Note this very well. This person talking here hasn't spoken to Professor Gates, didn't go to research it. Professor Gates quoted two other scholars that are even younger than him, but you see the defense. All these things are just being concocted to make whatever Professor Gates said to appear true. That's what makes the Negro a perfect slave. Now remember, some slave masters, foot soldiers can actually pretend to be Negroes and be saying what she's saying here because they understand that the Negro listens to what he is being told. And it goes further to say, meaning they did not get shipped elsewhere first then, resold to the United States areas because the records show that some slaves were brought other places like Jamaica or Barbados first then shipped over so the total is actually greater than the 388,000. It's still less than 1 million for the United States. Kataji Woodson never said a million Negroes landed in the United States. I am dealing with the United States because that is where I am and where my ancestors were enslaved. But yes, I know I have distant cousins other places. So you see how smart the slave master plays. Now remember, this person is telling us what Kataji Woodson did not say. Even when these things are well written and documented in his books and other historians as well recorded this but you see he or she just wants to make whatever professor gate has told him or her to appear true that's all he is interested in because they want it to be like the number of slaves shipped to what is the united states today were so minimal that to explain the overage they now claim that those ones were aborigine so ultimately the slave master will deny ever haven't done anything called slave trade. That's all they are working towards. So you understand what games they are playing as well. And this same user goes on to say, the Renaissance, you are missing the point. While it is true that the United States was not established until 1776, the British established all 13 colonies that later became the United States in the 17th and 18th century. And the ancestors of, as you say, so-called African Americans were brought to the 13 colonies which became the United States. You can keep going on about Kathaji Woodson. He never said million of slaves came to the original 13 colonies. If anything, the 388,000 is an overestimate because I've seen lower numbers, 330,000 between 1620 and the Civil War. You are not from the States and you have not read enough on black American history, but I do appreciate you have some concern for us. Also, he is not my Gates. Gates is just one academic who deals with the slave trade. Now remember, these people are slave masters, food soldiers. They are conditioned to propagate lies like this. They can't provide you with relevant citations. All they, they are trying to do is to make you believe the wrong figures provided by Professor Gates. We shall look at these figures shortly. Remember, we had done this in the past, but like we told you, nothing will change them. The slave master understands this. When an idea gets into the head of a Negro, to eradicate that idea can only be by cutting the head off. That's one big secret the slave master understands. And she goes further to say, the Renaissance, even if Nevada joined in 1864, black people weren't really living in Nevada when it became a state because Nevada was a free state. Please remember that this person wasn't born by then. So she can't tell us what could have transpired before she was born unless she has relevant citations. So we leave this apart for now. And she went on to say, the Renaissance, are you saying that millions of slaves were brought to the 13 colonies between the foundation of Jamestown, Virginia and Georgia, which was the last of the 13 colonies? Are you saying that millions were landed in Louisiana territory between its foundation and the Haitian Revolution and Napoleon selling it to the United States? Let's forget about Cuba and Jamaica and Brazil, etc. and only focus on the 13 colonies. The United States only had 13 colonies slash states when it began and it split some to create others or added others. For example, Florida belonged to Spain, then Britain then the United States, Alabama was carved partly out of Florida, Kentucky and West Virginia both carved out of Virginia, Texas was owned by Spain, then Mexico, later it was the Republic of Texas, 
then joined the Union, then the Confederate States, and finally rejoined the United States. Tenace came out of North Carolina. North and South Carolina were once just Carolina. Now remember, this person could have easily gone to look at the historical records. But like we told you, the Negro listens to whatever Master is saying. He doesn't look at the facts. If these states did not exist as they were today back then, how can somebody determine who was landed in those states before they existed and who did not? That's like an entity that did not exist prior to something. They are telling us they now know how many people could have landed in those states, even though they did not exist at that time. Let's leave it apart for now. At least we will use the facts they provided based on what Professor Gates said as well to show you that they just believe what Master is saying. That's the biggest challenge of the Negro. He listens to what Massa is saying and starts defending Massa. So let's go back to what Professor Gates was saying and this is his PBS and it says the African Americans many rivers to cross with Henry Louis Gates Jr. How many slaves landed in the US? This is what he's saying in his 100 amazing facts about the Negro. And so he says the most comprehensive analysis of shipping records over the course of the slave trade is the transatlantic slave trade database. Now, please remember when they say shipping records, you have to remember that the slaves at that time had different languages and different names from both the slave masters and the slave hunters who were capturing them. So there was no way they could have had a manifest. But the slave master understands that if he tells you a lie today, because the Negro does not have very strong reversibility of thought, he will not be able to remember that the scenario or the situation at that time was different from today. So he will be looking at it from the events and circumstances of today. So when they say shipping record, you will see Professor Gates in their movies showing you where papers were being shown as if they had names, they had a manifest and all that. Those are all lies, which we are going to prove to you. It's very easy to debunk because the slaves had a different language. They were always shipped between people who had different languages. So there is no way they could have gathered their names when they were speaking a totally different language from the slave master. For example, if we sent a so-called African-American to, let's say, the Bight of Biafra or Benin today, anywhere there, he or she will never understand the languages being spoken there unless he or she has learned them. Now, we want them to tell us how they could have captured the names if they don't know the language. They are going to tell you they have interpreters. We will also prove that to you that there is no way they could have because the way, for example, the Ibos wrote in CBD at that time, so the way they will write their names will be different from whatever the slave master is talking about. That will also prove the case wrong. And he goes on to say that this database was edited by professors David Eltis and David Richardson. That means this is where he's getting whatever he's saying from. So we can't be saying Professor Gates is right or wrong we have to look at those he got it from. That's where we're going to base whatever we're saying. And it goes further to say, while the editors are careful to say that all of their figures are estimates, I believe that they are the best estimates that we have, the proverbial gold standard in the field of the study of the slave trade. Now, while those that produced the figures he claims are the gold standard tell us they were estimates, he wants us to see them as true facts that they are the gold standard now this user is defending what the original owners say is an estimate you see how unfortunate it is that's why it is always difficult to fight for the negroes if you notice today even with this covid you know that there's a big conspiracy behind it but you can't defend those it is being targeted at because they in turn will be against you you can imagine what people like lincoln would have seen at that time because remember Everyone turned against Lincoln because they knew he wanted to abolish the slave trade. But going further, it says, Between 1525 and 1866, in the entire history of the slave trade to the New World, according to the Transatlantic Slave Trade Database, 12.5 million Africans were shipped to the New World. Now remember, he said the Transatlantic Slave Trade Database, edited by Professors David Eltis and David Richardson, they are careful to say that all of their figures are estimates. He wrote it there very clear. But you see how he's presenting it as facts, whereas the owners say it's an estimate. Now tell us, how can any sensible person claim that Professor Gates can be right when the source of the material we are told 
was an estimate by those that actually prepared it. You see how the slave master is smart. He gives himself a leeway. He knows these figures are not right. He says they are estimates. But you see how a negro or some foot soldier buys into it and wants everyone else to believe it. They are presenting it through Professor Gates because they know that the Negro will not believe it if it's coming from them. He goes on to say 10.7 million survived the dreaded Middle Passage. This is backing in North America, the Caribbean and South America. Notice how he claimed that these ships as if it was one ship that was coming to take drop some people here and move on to the next. This was something they were doing the same way they did oil today. If you notice how oil trade is going on from bite of Biafra and Benin today. That's exactly how they did it. Then here is where we are going to anchor on and it says and how many of these 10.7 million Africans were shipped directly to North America? Only about 388,000. That's right, a tiny percentage. So you see how that user turned everything around to those who were shipped directly to those who were shipped from Jamaica and all that. He or she forgets that there was something called seasoning. There is no way you can come and kill somebody's parents, capture him or her as a slave, and make him a slave directly. They did what was called seasoning. That was actually like a breaking process, a system of getting those slaves to believe they are slaves, that God created them to be slaves. That's why you hear the so-called African Americans today. They will tell you that, that the Most High would end them for slavery because they disobeyed God. But then, ask them, who told you this? Did you see God anywhere? The answer will be no. That's how they have been conditioned. The slave master is a subtle beast, so he understands how the brains of a negro works. So before we go into debunking the figures provided by both Professor Gates and those professors he listed as his source, let us look at the position of the people when the slave master was exporting his religion, which was the next stage of the slave trade, to the negroes. By referencing slave trade overruled for the salvation of Africa, by William Tett, D.D., English chaplain at Pau or whatever, and this was published in 1852. And there, we are shown that if they attempted to preach Jesus to the black man, he had his answer ready. Now remember, due to generational conditioning, the next generation didn't know who carried out the slave raids on them. So that's why you see some people, some so-called Negroes today, for example, claiming to be something like one Nigeria with the Fulani, or the Kanuris, or the Arabs, or the Babas, so to say, or the Tuaregs. So you have to understand what generational conditioning can do, because they haven't gone to read, and the slave master has gone to smuggle into their curriculum the concept of how they could have been the ones that sold themselves. So if you asked an average so-called African-American today, he or she will tell you that their brothers sold their own siblings. Then if you were to go to a place like Nigeria, in southern Nigeria for example, and ask any of them, they are going to also claim that it was a bunch of priests or some other ludicrous nonsense that the slave master told them that were behind the slave trade. So that's what they are going to tell you, because they have been misinformed already. So it goes further to say, who fired my native village, he asked us, who slaughtered my innocent babes who murdered my aged father and mother and sold my wife into captivity. Was it not a white man that did all these things? Was it not a white man from whose cruel hands I myself with difficulty escaped? And now, when white man has made me desolate, does he come to tell me of righteousness and truth, to bid me cast away my gods and follow his? Nay, physician, heal thyself. Thyself practice righteousness and mercy and then call on me to follow thee. It was thus that in a variety of ways the slave trade shot Africa against us. Besides debasing the black man, it increased an hundredfold the animosity with which he regarded the white. It kindled in his bosom as the fruit of mortal injury, a spirit of undying resentment so that Christian love and mercy sought to approach him in vain. Now we ask you, do you not notice that it is the same Negroes today that defend the same religion? Because this generation didn't see what the previous generation saw and the slave master being a subtle beast was able to now miseducate them. If you were to read Miseducation of the Negro, 
you will also understand what we're saying. But our interest is for you to see that it couldn't have been the Negroes selling themselves. But remember, Professor Gates tells us that it was Africans selling other Africans. Do you think he hasn't read these things before? Do you think he doesn't know all this? But he has to tell you what master told him to tell you. The slave master understands that if he says it himself, the Negroes will not believe him. So if you saw something like this, that should tell you who was behind it. But you see how they turned it to how the Negroes could have sold themselves. So now with Professor Gates telling those lies, even though it wasn't from him, the Negroes will start believing him because they think he is one of them. And if you notice, that's why the slave master engineered the COVID-19 from China. He knows that the Negroes no longer trust either the Europeans or the Americans. That's why they had to move through China. Let us also reference a new voyage to Guinea describing the customs, manners, soil, climate, habits, buildings, education, manual arts, agriculture, trade, whatever. Likewise, an account of their animals, minerals, etc. by William Smith, Esquire, appointed by the Royal African Company to survey their settlements, make discoveries, etc. And this was published in 1744. We want you to note that this William Smith was appointed by the Royal African Company, which was a slave trading company at that time, so that when Professor Gates is talking to you, you have to ask where is he getting his information from. And he tells us that the descending natives account it their greatest unhappiness that they were ever visited by the Europeans. Now remember, all those slave masters in America also came from Europe. You need to bear that in mind. So when you are talking about an American, most of them came from Europe. And then they brought some freed Negroes with them to help them fight the Indians. We leave that apart for now. Our interest is to show you that the slave master is a subtle beast. He is the one remote controlling and teleguiding Professor Gates. And that's why these lies are coming out from nowhere. And please remember when you hear a so-called African American talking to you about Africa, how you have to remain there, there in US and all that. Those are just house Negroes. They don't understand what is going on. Remember, the people they stole from have every right to talk about what happened to them. So it goes further here to say, they say that we Christians introduced the traffic of slaves and that before our coming, they lived in peace. But say they, it is observable that wherever Christianity comes, there come with it a sword, a gun, powder and ball. And indeed, thus far, they say right, for the Christians are continually at war, one with another. Now, if you notice, the United States is always going to war. So when you keep defending them, you have to remember that before they came, the Negroes lived in peace. They brought the slave trade as well. So this should actually debunk the idea of how Africans so the other Africans always propagated by Professor Gates. At least that takes down one part of it. At least the Negroes regret the coming of the Europeans, which you can see here. But today you see that the Negroes are Christians. So that should again tell you that whatever Professor Gates is saying is what Massa asked him to say. He didn't research it himself, which he clearly indicated in the write-up, which we referenced earlier. And this is how much we can take on YouTube on the limited edition of this series, Awakening for Negroes, A Reply, Part 1. We thank you very much for listening and the full version will be available shortly on Patreon. Thank you very much once again for listening. Peace.